Did you uh, see that there was a sequel to Okami teased? They already did a sequel. Okami Den. Oh, but I think this one was going to be... I just saw this like a week ago. Somebody, oh, like my a, God. Like the creator like teased there was going to be something... some like the, Or the world's not done or something like that. Really? Yeah. I did not see that. I saw it somewhere. I can't remember now where I saw it. And I was like, I need to tell Mogan. And I, would I forgot to def- it to I'm going to look that up right after we get out of here. Or maybe even while we're here. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't hear about that. Okami Den was a real letdown. I remember you, you you've yes. talked about Okami yes. Den. Cause I, oh, because you talked about it in our best and worst Oh yeah. of a series Yeah, because it sucked. Yeah, because you talked about <laughs> Okami. And then you said Okami Den is terrible. <laughs> Really great to make those. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's easy to do that when there's only two games in the series, though. But still. <laughs> but man, um, I've always felt like they had so much room to continue that story because the original Okami, when it ends, it ends on like this. Cra- Spoilers for a 20 year old game at this point ahead. Woo! Be careful. Um, when it ends, it like really takes this ancient alien style turn. Oh, really? Where it's like, hey, you know all those gods that we've been like talking about and fighting like the whole game. They actually came here on what's technically a spaceship called the Ark of Yamato, uh, and they're pretty much just aliens. Oh, also, these people that have, like, pr- they kind of look like they have wings on their head, and they have blonde hair and blue eyes. They're actually from the moon. Oh. They, so it's like aliens. It is it's aliens. It's all aliens. And it's like, aliens. oh, it's aliens. <laughs> 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 and I love that kind of crap. Nice. So I was like, <gasps> so what of- I really want them to do is, like, go back and actually actually talk more about what happened to the moon tribe yeah. what happened to the aliens that basically got destroyed by these other aliens that rolled up in their spaceship and then wound up on earth and then you have ancient japan but it's aliens, it's aliens. <laughs> they're behind it so, all yeah I, they, so i would really love for them to go back and actually explore that story now that more. we're talking about it like I I, I I i need to confirm that this actually happened and yeah, that i'm may, just not talking don't out get of my, my hopes ass, up for I'm, nothing you bastard <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i i know i saw this uh, Okami 2 confirmed? Googling that. Okay, it wasn't crazy. October 18th. Okay, what's it say? Um, because the original studio that did Okami, Clover, they shut down. Okay, um, so we got Metro. This is from Metro.co, Metro Entertainment UK website. Okay. Okami 2 announced by Platinum Games and Akumi Nakamura. Platinum Games! Maybe. We're not sure. Oh, so it's, it's thanks. Kind of, okay, so... Um, <laughs> So this article is Hideki Kamiya maybe finally getting his chance to make a sequel to the Capcom classic Okami unless he's per- making a particularly cruel joke. If you take the video below at face value, then Platinum Games co-founder and Okami director Hid- Hideki Kamiya has just confirmed that he's working on a sequel, except no other announcement has been made. And Kamiya is famous, is infamous for joking around and trolling his fans on Twitter. Okay, so oh this God, is kind okay, of a, that's kind of a, not super yeah, sounding ultra yeah, confirmed. Sound okay, I'll reserve my hopes then. But, but anyway. He's right. There, it, it, there's a possibility. It's ripe for the happening. It's ripe for the happening. But you know what else is ripe for the happening? Talking about some <laughs> other great games here at Team Chat Podcast, a weekly video game show where we talk to you, like we said, about video games, the ones we love, the ones we hate, and everything in between. I'm one of your hosts, Jared Wilson, joined by Rachel Mogan. Bongiorno. Bongiorno. Catching up on your on some Catching reading? up on some light reading. Uh, it's a Sunday morning. I feel like that's the perfect time to... Read the new. I'm trying to like do the newspaper, yeah, the newspaper snap, but snap, I can't snap. without knocking everything over. Also, it's it. a magazine; it doesn't really doesn't snap. quite snap. <laughs> doesn't have that crisp snap of Does the newspaper. Does not. Paper. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot, a lot going on yeah. here in the near future of Villa Juegos. That's true. That's true. Planet Zoo, for example. Oh, a zoo uh, simulator. I, guess? I would assume so. That if it's not, sense. that would be a real letdown. You know what needs to be remastered? <laughs> zoo Tycoon. Yeah, or the oh. one where you're the do- the dinosaur park. I don't know. Dino Park Tycoon? There was the one with the Dinosaur Park. I'm just making That'd that up. That'd be kind of cool to have. I sure. don't know if I'd play it, but I just, you know, it popped in my Probably head. Probably not. I remembered, <laughs> I remembered it from from ages gone by. I thought that would be a fun one to play again. But you know what? If you want to hear us talk about some other games other than a possible Dinosaur Zoo Tycoon game, whatever, remaster, you can do that here on Team Chat Podcast. We're a weekly video game show. So if you want to catch new episodes of Team Chat Podcast, you can do that by tuning in on Tuesdays every week at 9 a.m. Central Time on podcast services around the World Wide Web. And you can also catch a video version of each episode on YouTube. Head over to YouTube.com slash Team Chat Podcast to watch those. You can also head over to Team Chat Podcast.com slash where to listen for a complete list of all those places the show is available. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Join our Discord server where you can have some fun gaming conversations with us when we're not on the show recording each week. And finally, 
If you want to support us on Patreon and help make the show bigger and better, head over to patreon.com slash teamchatpodcast, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the show, and in return, we'll give you cool perks, like in the episodes early and other fun little bits of goodness. But Indeed. if you can't do that, no big deal at all. We totally understand, and we just appreciate that you're here listening, giving us those listenership, give, but, you know, maybe give us a review, some stuff like that. That'll Actually, be great, I've noticed that we have gotten a couple of newer reviews we on have. Ye old iTunes, yeah. so thank you for thank those. You. Those we really, really appreciate us. those. They do. They really help us get out there, help the old Google algorithms and whatnot find us and get us more popular. So any help that you can give us to make the show bigger and better, we greatly appreciate it. And writing a, a review is 100% free. That is true. To you, maybe not your soul. Just costs a little bit of time. <laughs> just costs That's a little all. bit of time. A little bit of time to <laughs> click it to clack on that keyboard. So for today's topic, this is actually one of our episodes that we recorded back when we took our break in October of uh, 2019 as kind of like a backlog episode in case we ever had to miss episodes. So if you're listening to this, that means... Something's going on and we're just taking a break or whatever. So you get to hear this episode. It's going to see the light of day. But because of that, and it's just been a little bit since we've seen each other, we're going to use Gosh. this uh, this opportunity as one to catch up on what we've been playing. Jared, I love what, these episodes. What if we never need to use this one? And it's just buried forever. Because now we have a few in the backlog. And yeah. what? Well, if we don't have cause to use it within like a year, we'll just release it as a bonus. Hope maybe. Yeah. yeah, we should do that. So we that should. way it never gets yeah. too old. Yeah. That's a good I idea. Mean, you know, a year from now, I might look much worse. <laughs> yeah. Age could have taken its toll we, we on either of us. could have taken its toll. <laughs> <laughs> you might be significant. Significantly grayer. I'll be. I'll have crazy hey, feet. Gonna, if I'm gonna just gonna be happy if I'm gonna get the chance to go gray before I just need to shave my head bald anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. Hair. You know, it's just a good just point. Good old genetics. You know. I don't think that you can see them uh, very much, but I do officially have. Which side is it? I think on this side I have like an official gray hair oh, yeah? now. And every time I find it, I of course pluck it right out, and I go, "You Scott." It's not the same as, as a gray hair, but I do have, man, we're really taking this, just talk about whatever we want. <laughs> but, hey, we're getting old. Okay? I mean, it's it just, we just got to talk about these things in life. But no, I, uh, I keep finding, they're not gray hairs, but I keep finding like blonde or red hairs in my beard. That's not weird. in the hair, just in my beard. That's weird, Jared. Yeah. And then it, it'll just like one day I'll look in the mirror and it's just like this blonde hair shines brilliantly as if reflecting the sun. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I have to get this off my face. That's really weird. <laughs> I don't understand it. But it's like people who is it? It's um, Michael C. Hall, the actor Dexter and oh. stuff like that. He uh, has like brownish hair, but he grew his beard out a few years back completely red. It's just, it's, genetics it's are crazy. really weird. Yeah. Humans are strange. We are. And we like shouldn't be functioning the way we are. It's very true. <laughs> we need to go back a few stages in evolution and like have another try. At it. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's Dwight say in the office? We need a new plague. <laughs> we do need a new plague. That would be real helpful. Oh, Not man. to you and me, but. <laughs> yeah, no, because it would suck because that means we have to go. But, you know. No, I'm just kidding. I'll take one I, for the team, you guys. I guess it makes it better for future generations. I I feel like I'm like not. That. Yeah, future Jared. He'll, he'll it's be thinking able to, about those people. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's what that's what it's about. Anyways, <laughs> so to the games then. So uh, I actually had something really cool and exciting um, in all my years of playing Civilization the game the series. I, I actually you've been playing it a lot lately because I, I got it on the Switch yeah. and it's my Stardew Valley. You know how we talk oh, about that? Yeah. Like Sam's been playing Stardew Valley a lot. This Civilization has always been that way for me. It's one and and obviously famously the game has the hashtag one more turn. Because it's impossible to quit. Because you never stop. It's yeah. impossible to stop. <laughs> because funny. as soon as I'm like, I hit my stopping point, well, then that's when three countries declare war on me. And I'm like, well, I need to see this through. I obviously can't sleep on this. Of course. No, no I'm not going to be as, as effective in my decision making. So I just play for days on end. But Alternatively, you might be more effective in your decision making <laughs> if, I took if you took some breaks. <laughs> no, took a little nap no, now no, and no, then. No, 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 no. It doesn't work out that way. But I did actually... Uh, well, when we recorded this, it was yesterday. I actually finished a game because a lot of the time in Civ, you can just tell, especially when you're playing in the harder difficulty levels, you can just tell this game is against me and there's no way I'm going to be able to pull this a victory oh, off boy. because there are so many factors in these games. Your starting position, where you, pl you plant your first city, how quickly you expand and balance that with your science and imp improving your cities and the districts and all this other stuff. There's a lot to take in. Also fending off other other uh you know the ai empires and everything like that and so there's a lot of the stuff so a lot of the time i can get halfway through and i'm like 
there's no way. When that's when it's already telling me that uh, Jadwiga of Poland is already in the atomic era, and I'm sitting in the Middle Ages still, I'm like, well, <laughs> well, this isn't going to go well for guess me. Guess we're going to have to go the diplomacy route for that one. <laughs> in this game though that I won that I just finished, France was that way. I was getting. I'm in the information era, which is the final era, and they're just now getting into the industrial age. Oh, from medieval. poor and I'm France. Like, oh no, <laughs> this poor, is so sad. Poor France. So did, when you play Civilization, are you your own fake country? Or do you take on the identity of like a specific country? A specific country. Oh, so you who have are a you? list of, of rulers. Oh, I didn't um, know that. I actually went back to my old standby and played as Cyrus of the Persian Empire, oh, which I as, I always played as Persia uh, in Civilization Three. I used to play that because they got this incredible uh, unit called the Immortal. In, oh, you told Civ me 3, about that. The Immortal kicks ass and can still be a relevant military p- uh, figure in the game even until the late stages and that was in Civ 3 not so much in Civ right. 6 anymore but still but the one thing that made this victory special to me is it was the first time I won a Civ game on a high difficulty level I was playing on Prince which I believe is like the middle or it's not quite the middle one but it's like it's higher up in the upper thing. middle in upper middle of the because there's like 10 difficulty levels oh wow I didn't know good there's one for me Chieftain for is where I, like, I used to play <laughs> all the time and like growing up that's where I mainly played in Civ 3 was I played Chieftain I would sometimes jump up to like Warlord or something like that but now I've been making the concerted effort I'm like okay I've been playing this game long enough I need to take off raise the bumpers you know like they say have in bowling and no longer and, and actually have some big challenges so I've been playing on the Prince difficulty level Fine, uh, on the eventual road to the deity level which I just I've tried that it's insane. That doesn't sound fun. It's not. It, <laughs> one of the few games that I've played, I just, within five turns, I'm like, I've lost already. <laughs> That's but, a bummer. <laughs> but so th- what made this game so special is that it's the first game of Civilization in my entire Civilization playing career that I won through the science victory or in any victory mode other than just total world domination. Oh my God, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> You need help. I mean, congratulations, but also you got to take the pacifist routes more well, often. But that's what I mean. That's what I've been really trying because the the military route, it's not the easiest route, but it is one of the easier ways to win because you are, you basically just, you build up a, a mass, a huge military and it was easier in Civ 3. The mechanics of working with the military and attacking cities and all that stuff have changed dramatically from Civ 3 to Civ 6. And so it's not quite so easy as just swarming because that's literally that's what a you would do. Strategy. Yeah, it's what literally you would do in Civilization Three. Is I would just build up like fifty immortals and then just run over everybody because nobody else is focusing on their military that much, especially when you're playing on Chieftain. It's called cheating. But now in in Civ Six, you have to legitimately do sieges. Like you you can't just roll up with f- with five units and expect those five units to then roll through a whole mil- a whole um, empire because each city has like wall- outer defenses and then it's a s- a defenses within that itself that you have to beat down and they heal o- after every turn. And then oh. you can also be attacked by other y- units for the, m- that empire's military. And so there's just a lot of these different factors that make it super hard. You actually have to have siege units like artillery or catapults and stuff like that aiding in the attack on cities rather than just having the immortals and stuff like that, just running up and beating at the gates with their spears. And so it just takes a lot more into it. And so that's why I wanted to a, that makes it more difficult to go after the domination victory in Civ six. But that's why I've also been pursuing the other ways of getting these victories and why I went after this, the, uh, the space race science victory one. So it was a lot of fun. I know very little about civilization beyond what you have told me. So the Persian empire obviously has these, this immortal, Mm -hmm. uh, military, Unit. unit. Yeah. Um, what are some of the cool things that like the other countries have that is unique to them? That's oh, like man. really fun to be or that's really hard to counter. Like if I wanted to go full on, we can win through friendship. <laughs> what country <laughs> would I be going you know, for? That's a very good I'm question. I'm guessing it's not Russia. <laughs> not um... Sweden. They're pretty friendly. Hmm. I have to think about that because most of the time you and your again, fighter ways. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Like, I'm actually not totally sure because I know a lot of them because now in, in Civ six, at least a lot of these, uh, a lot of the empires, they get like a special unit or they'll get a special improvement or they'll have some other bonus. Like they get plus like two culture smart. or yeah. Plus like five art, science maybe? and stuff like that. Yeah. I different guess things Italy like that. probably has art, right? Uh, no, Rome is actually a very military based empire. <sighs> 
But like I know Rome gets the legion, which replaces the swordsman, the generic swordsman unit. Uh, Germany, for instance, gets the U boat, which re- oh, which cool. replaces. And it's so yeah, it's not always just like a a ancient era unit. Yeah, it can yeah. it can take place. So like so you might not get it until the later exactly. game. So you're kind of assuming that you'll make it that far. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. See. So there's a lot of different things, and and that's what you got to plan for. Do you want to be strong in the early game? Or do you want to have some things that are going to take place and make it easier to win for you in the later game? Because, and that's that's part of the challenge of it too, is balancing all that stuff out. And a lot of it too also, sometimes I would quit games when it's been like, okay, I know I'm going to win this one due to military. So, so it's not always because I'm like, well, I'm lost this one. I get bored in them very easily sometimes because it's it's a lot about, there are definite periods where it gets like in the mid, in the, near the late game, you're like, okay, I'm just hitting the, the next turn, next turn, next turn, next turn. Let's, oh, because you action. just know you're going to win. Yeah, exactly. And so when it gets to that point, I'm like, okay, this is good. But this game was great because I was actually fighting wars basically the whole game. That usually doesn't happen that much. How's that? How's that yerba mate taste? A little too sweet. A little too sweet. <laughs> we'll power through and take it. small sips. You don't have to finish. I'll, <laughs> I'll finish. It. You don't like it. If you don't like. I know it's not. I know it's not for everybody. It's an acquired taste, somewhat. But I lived off of these at ACL two I'm years sure ago. Sure, you did. <laughs> They're great. Anyways, but anyway, so yeah, there's just a lot of different, all these different things to take in, and so I, I was very pleased with myself that I was able to a on the prince difficulty expand big enough to have a good working empire to compete with everybody else. I actually was able to acquire enough resources that people were coming to me begging me for stuff and like trying to offer me really weak ass shit. France. (laughs) They were. They were offering me horses. I'm like, this is the damn modern times. Why are you offering me horses in exchange for oil? Obviously to build up your own country's derby. It's a real tourist attraction. (laughs) Yeah, it's no longer for military (laughs) might that I need horses. It's it's for for fanciness. (laughs) but no i just had a lot of fun i was playing it and i've been playing it way too much i mean let's be honest how much i've been playing Civ six because i just the difference is i have it on my pc but i just bought it on the switch because it was 20 bucks so they actually put switch games on sale and it's great why not and so i bought it there and then i was just like well now i have understand i understand the problem now of having it portable and being able to take it literally everywhere i'd like to go but still i was very happy with myself finally achieved my first non-military and scientific victory at that so i was happy about that congratulations good sir and so now to challenge myself i'm going to remove the science on my next game i'm going to remove the science and domination victories as possibilities so i have to shoot for either the economic dipl- diplomatic or cultural victories Ooh, or go for, religion go for, vi- religious victory too religious victory that sounds very scary go for cultural victory that one would be a lot of fun because that is focusing more on like the arts especially in the later yeah, game you, cool. you unlock the ability to uh discover archaeological sites Frontier. which you have to build archaeologists to go discover and then they find like great works and things to put in museums in your other cities which raises your culture so that's nice. a, an area of it that i'm interested in in uh in exploring more plus they're about to come out with the expansions i think for civ 6 for the switch uh, gathering storm and rise and fall Ooh, fancy! And so, and are those going to be free or do you have to pay for them? you got to pay for them okay um but i have i have the expansions on pc and i'm actually playing a game on there right now um i'm coupe of the maori that's another good game that I've got going on for me right now. But uh, but that one's fun. Gathering Storm's a lot of fun because it, it, it includes weather effects. Like there'll be uh, blizzards, tornadoes, hurricanes, different stuff like volcanoes even. Oh, God. And so and it changes the, the, the way that it works in a much bigger way. And it also introduces the World Congress. Gosh, how much would it suck to start as Rome and then just get obliterated by Vesuvius <laughs> like, like I'm gonna plan instantly. Up. Well, but that's part of the draw of it because it does give you some better resources around volcanoes. Volcanic lands, very fertile. Exactly, blah, exactly. Blah, blah. It's, it's, it's all pros and cons. Volcano guys. Do I want this wheat now? Do I want to be burned up by Vesuvius? <laughs> Well, all I know is that Mount Etna, which is in very, very southern Italy, right. uh, explodes on the regular. And the people that are actually the closest to it often get the wor- the least of it because the explosion ash just kind of goes right over them. Mm. And it spreads so far that it misses them. And they're like, ha, suckers that are further away from this deadly, <laughs> deadly volcano. <laughs> if only you had built closer to it. <laughs> Did you ever see the blockbuster hit film Pompeii? Starring Kit Harrington, Kiefer Sutherland, and others. No. About the fall, of the explosion of Vesuvius and the destruction of Pompeii. I didn't even know that was a thing. Kiefer Sutherland is in it? Wow. If that How tells old you is anything. Kit Harrington? Oh, it, it came out during Game of Thrones. Recent? It was like oh three years ago, I want to say. I have did not. You have not. You missed this. This. Oh my god, pillar I missed it. Of cinema, but I definitely want to see it now. 
Oh, it's terrible. Oh, I will is say it really? that. <laughs> awesome. I mean, you might you might find some other re- redemptive value out of it that I missed, but I watched this and was like, "Oh, Kit Harrington, what is you doing?" The, the <laughs> prestigious Sutherland name. I know. Oh boy. All That's right. Well. You win some, you lose some, yeah, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. If you pretty live much. next to Mount Vesuvius. Or, you lost a lot. Or make films about <laughs> Vesuvius. <laughs> you're going to lose either way. So what have you been playing lately? I have been circling back to a couple of older games or games that I've already started playing and just making more progress. Yep. So I don't know if I mentioned it on the show. I know I posted about it in our Discord, uh, and this is big air quotes, recently because depending on where you're when you're hearing this maybe not recently but i finally did beat celeste oh nice so i actually made it to the summit i made it to the heights of celeste mountain uh and i beat the game um i think i finished with exactly 100 strawberries on my first playthrough i think that's out of 180 oh okay so you're like 175 so not being very familiar with the game, how do you get strawberries? So strawberries are just um, optional pointless. They technically give you points, but the points don't do anything. Mm-hmm. They're literally pointless. Just little challenges that are in particular um, levels or areas that are just for fun. Um, strawberries are usually like in such a location that they are much harder to get to or that they're a lot more work or they're particularly dangerous. Whereas if you just skip them, which you absolutely can just skip the strawberries, the game's probably going to be a lot easier for you because the way that Celeste is designed, um, it is one of the most challenging but user-friendly challenge games I've ever played. So the whole point of Celeste is that it's a pretty difficult platformer. Uh, And the strawberries are just like this optional added difficulty to that. That being said, the way that deaths are done in Celeste, I think is the best way they could have possibly done them. Uh, You know, with games like Dead Cells or like with Hollow Knight or any other, maybe even Blasphemous to a certain extent, when you Mm -hmm. die you get set back a fair ways, right? Like either to the last place that you saved or to the start of a level. Um, And in the case of Hollow Knight, you have to go get all your shit back. In the case of Dead Cells, you just kind of have to start over uh, and hope that you do better next time. Uh, And in Blasphemous, you told me a little bit about that. You just kind of start back at like the beginning of the area, right? There are these save, these altars that you have to kneel at throughout, and that's your save spot, and they refill your health and different things like that. Gotcha, exactly. And so, yeah, when you die, you go back to the last one you saved at. So in Celeste, that is not a thing, and I love it. So Celeste is made up of just basically a single frame, like an area, Uh, And that's your like most immediate level. And the minute you move on to the next real area, you start at that area. Even when you die. So even when you die. So let's say that I'm at the um, base camp. I'm at uh, the Forsaken City, Mm -hmm. I think is what it's called, which is the very first area. Uh, If you make it from point A to point B and the screen moves and you're in the next area, if you die in that area, you just pop right back up at the very beginning of that immediate era. Area. Meaning that you can die as many times times as you want and you start back at the exact place that you started where you were so it it really just makes it to where you both do and don't have a fear of dying on the one hand certain levels are so hard and actually so big that you can make it halfway die And going back to the beginning of that area is just soul crushing because you're like, it took me this long just to make it to the halfway point. (laughs) And now you're telling me that after that, it's even harder. (laughs) So to a certain extent, it can be occasionally really frustrating because you have to do it perfectly. I mean, with a lot of Celeste's later levels and with like the more challenging levels um, that are optional, like with strawberries, for example, for example, if you die like right before the strawberry, it's just an extra knife in the kidneys. And you're like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. Like not in the heart. <laughs> not in the heart. The it, because it's a slow, it's painful, even more painful death yeah. after that. <laughs> Your organs are just going to slowly shut down as you lay on the floor and cry. Uh, so even though it is really challenging and it's really hard to get all the strawberries um, in a lot of cases, mm-hmm. uh, it's built in such a way that I f- personally feel like it's never never been impossible it's been really really hard Mm -hmm. but not impossible uh and that's why i feel like it's so easy to go back to celeste and just pick it up and immediately be able to keep going the way you were before so i've already gone back to some of the earlier levels um something else that i really like about it on second playthrough 
is that the uh, levels, when you start them up, the game kind of gives you like a little level menu that shows you, hey, this level is more or less broken up into three parts, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Mm -hmm. And then it shows you not locations, but how many of the strawberries in each location you've actually managed to get. Oh, okay. So Good all it'll be, it'll have like a little line and of five strawberries, the first two might be populated, but then you're missing the second two and then the last one is populated, which gives you a very slight hint about where the missing strawberries are. Because if I've already got the first two, then the second two must be right between that and the end. Mm. So it just kind of helps you narrow it down just enough to be like, okay, I have a rough idea of where I need to be focused focusing on so you can just like rapidly get to those sections and then just focus on those sections so it's really helpful um and it makes second playthrough um a lot easier again just really user friendly in terms of you're not having to constantly go through and be like did i get that strawberry already do mm -hmm. i still need to go to this area because you more or less already know so celeste it's an Excellent, excellent game. Eventually, we will probably do a full review about it because I have a lot to say. Uh, but yeah, the point is, I beat it. Hooray nice. to me. I think I had like... I know, you finished the game. I finished the game. <laughs> I think I had like 24,000 deaths or something. Oh my God. It was a lot. 24,000? <laughs> oh no, 2,400. 2,400. Oh, okay. Excuse I was like, me. Geez. Whoops. I think I actually posted how many it was, but it was a lot. Um, oh God. I mean, but I wouldn't. My, if I was about to say though, like if you got twenty four thousand, mine would be. You know, I mean, when I thought it was, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have, obviously have like fifty thousand deaths in this game, but twenty four fifty seven deaths, two thousand four hundred fifty seven deaths, and that was as of beating the game, not as of my going back right. and adding more deaths onto that, which I definitely have. But man, once you've beaten the game, going back to the early levels, mm -hmm. it's laughable. You're like, oh my god, how did I suck I so much in this? the beginning? This is so easy, and nice. you're just like blazing through it. Well, that's how you get the new strawberries, as, though. Exactly. So it's like, man, this is the best. Now that I actually don't suck this is awesome <laughs> so now knowing that it saves your progress to the last screen you're on gives me a little more incentive to want to actually play it it's much i was thinking yeah. if it was the original which that's just on me for not having looked into it any more than that but i was just assumed it's you you go through and if you die you have to restart because that's how i feel like a lot of these games have been no. lately is that more of the punishing style of, no, of play. celeste is punishing enough that it doesn't need to make it worse good <laughs> so it's it's <laughs> arguably one of the most user-friendly challenge type games i've played in recent memory even more so than hollow knight which i also feel like has a fairly user-friendly system mm -hmm. so i would say I feel like Celeste was really built up to me through hearsay as being like real, like impossibly difficult, like so hard. Yeah. It's actually not. Um, it's it's just the right amount of challenge if you already enjoy platformer games. Okay, cool. So anybody that felt like nervous about getting it, um, don't. You can do it. That's the whole point of the game. You can definitely do it. It's you just, just take a lot have of time. to practice and try and power through, and that's the whole point of Celeste. You can do it. <laughs> very cool, very cool. I guess the game I'm thinking of is Cuphead. Cuphead, you die, you oh, restart. Oh, God, yeah, no. So you're, you're restarting the whole thing, and that, that led to many like that. a rage quit. But did you ever have? How many of those deaths resulted in rage quits? In Celeste? Mm -hmm. Um... Rage quits. None. You're a better gamer than me. I would have quit. I would have been so mad so well, many times. So, so, so the <laughs> idea behind that is that you quit because you're so enraged, right? Um, I think that the times that I've quit on a level that I felt stuck on was more because... I was very conscious of the fact that I've been playing for a few hours now mm. and I'm kind of tired. I'm probably already not at my best. So I'm just going to come back to this tomorrow. But it's always been like See, a, that's the rational way of, of yeah. This. it's been the rational quitting yeah. of the like, yeah. I know I can do this. I just have to come back tomorrow morning when I feel better and I've had some time to think about it and my hands aren't cramping. <laughs> <laughs> so because I do as Celeste is one of those games that gives me like the sweaty gamer hands because I'm like I'm so stressed I sometimes on games like that feel like and this may be a thing already I know like obviously chalk on the hands to like oh my god is like a, is like a that? thing not for gaming well oh. maybe for gaming I thought that I, was I a billiards that. thing it is kind of, or whatever or gymnasts is oh it gymnasts? yes it's the, gymnasts. gymnasts it's so gymnasts. it's like are those a thing for gamers because my god 
sweaty hands is like I've during seen, tense like, moments. Esports gamers use those heating packs, but mm. I think that's more to keep their like ligaments limber. Yeah, limber and less to absorb sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I'm just like, saying there needs to be like some pro gamer gear for this because there, there's there, a market. There pro- I'm sure there is. There I'm probably sure. already is, and we just don't know. But that just gives me like the mental imagery of taking like the edge of a gaming controller and like the little cube of chalk from like billiards <laughs> and just like <laughs> chalk putting it on the thumbsticks. Yeah, just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will help me. <laughs> That's what we need. Oh man, seriously though. For real. Do you think if I had to like mail my PlayStation controller into Sony and be like, it's not working all of a sudden and I don't know why, and then they get it and it's covered in chalk and they're like, ma'am? <laughs> what and there's have you been an doing? inordinate <laughs> amount of chalk in all the crevices of this. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, to keep to keep my the sweat off. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah, there's I'm, a not, reason I'm not crazy. For it. <laughs> not crazy. And they're like, we're not doing this for free. <laughs> In fact, this is gross. We're just going to send you a new one. Indeed. And in other platformer news, obviously platformers are one of my favorite types of games of all time. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I obviously play a lot of them. I went back again to Hollow Knight to try desperately to do two things that I knew I hadn't completed and that I really wanted to complete. One of which is the third tier of the Colosseum. So this is like base game stuff, by the way. So if you're worried about mega spoilers, it is a mild spoiler, um, but you don't really have to be that worried about it. You can find this and it's just kind of like a fun in-game thing. It doesn't really have a lot of story beats to it. So the Colosseum is basically just Hollow Knight's... uh, little challenge run mode where basically you just roll up into this actual coliseum it's like a little stadium the doors close and then basically the arena just throws at you waves of enemies which are often um all at once and of varying types of enemies and you have to beat them all it's basically just a kill them all uh and in a contained area (laughs) and on top of that certain parts of the coliseum also change the terrain Mm. So, you know, technically it's just a flat floor for a lot of it. And you've got the walls that you mm-hmm. can kind of do wall jumps off of. And of course, the uh, the the knight himself, he him or herself itself, uh, has a lot of capabilities of jumping and doing jump, double jumps and having a lot of mobility. So depending on what tier of the Colosseum you are, it might be really pretty easy levels one and two or level three which just has this insane curve yeah. of immediate brutal difficulty because i was feeling like is it just me am i like the only one that's struggling this hard on the third tier of the coliseum because i feel like i should have been able to beat it by now mm-hmm. so i watched some videos about it and everybody was kind of like yeah it's way harder than levels one and two by far it's actually kind of ridiculous so you're gonna have to go in there with like all all tools available. Uh, and to that extent, I knew that I didn't technically have all of the available tools to make myself as powerful as possible mm-hmm. because I was missing two charm notches. So the charm system, if you're familiar with Hollow Knight, is basically a a set amount of spaces that you have to fill with various charms that you collect throughout the game. And charms have different notch values. So a really, really good charm might cost four notches, and you only have 11 available to you. Uh, Whereas a kind of shitty but sort of useful charm might only take one slot. Mm -hmm. So it's a certain amount of like art and science of like matching up your really good charms with your kind of less good but still really useful charms and seeing how how you can maximize your abilities through the limited spaces that you have. So I had nine notches and there's a maximum 11 possible. So I was like, man, I desperately need those last two notches because I specifically wanted to be able to equip Unbreakable Strength, which costs three, um, Spell Twister, which is the, I think it's called the spell twister, which is the one that makes your spells really, really powerful. Am I, I think it's spell twister. I have not. It's one of the shaman yet. ones. Um, and it costs three also, I believe. Goodness. And then I also wanted soul catcher, which costs an additional two. And then I also wanted mark of pride, which costs an extra three. Mm-hmm. How many is that? Three, three, three. That's nine. Yeah. 10, 11. Yeah, that's 11. Um, right. Three, three. Is my math terrible? 
six, nine, eleven. My math is 11. always terrible, so don't ask me. That's that's specifically the build that I wanted because I wanted to be able to make my nail arts at least really good by having a lot of range and making it really, really strong. Mm-hmm. But I also wanted to have a certain amount of magic up where, where basically you're able to get soul and then use soul on your spells and have those spells be really powerful. I'm trying to get the best of both worlds. Not sure if it's actually working out for me, but I'm getting better because finally I made it to a point in the Coliseum tier three that I haven't made it to before. So I haven't beaten it. I still haven't beaten it, but I did at least make it farther than ever. So I was like, okay, this is something. (laughs) So once you finish this and finish the tier three of the Coliseum, are you done done with the game or there's still you're trying to get one of the good in, one of the endings, right? I'm trying to get the best ending. The best ending. Air okay. quotes, best ending. So there's still that that I have to look forward to. Um, but I've just uh, in order to get one of the final two charm notches, I did and very mild spoiler here. Uh, part of the DLC for the Grim Troop uh, in order to get, I think, the 10th or 11th notch, you have to beat um, Grim. So not Nightmare King Grim, mm-hmm. which is even harder, just regular Grim. Okay. So I finally beat just regular Grim. And honestly, I don't know. Maybe I was just in a particularly good mood, so I was playing especially well, because I had been trying for a few days, Mm -hmm. and it was the point of like, you know what, I'm just, I keep dying and dying and dying, I'm done with this, I'm going to come back tomorrow, and then I think it was on like a Sunday morning, where I woke up and I was like, okay, I can do it this time. You know what it was? It was a Sunday, but it wasn't the morning. I woke up, tried it, died, went to a yoga event. Where they like had like tarot card readers and like free snacks from all of our local mm. vegan vendors and whatever. Also free yoga classes. Just hop in and do oh. it. So I did some yoga, had some vegan snacks, and then I came home and I was like, okay, I'm limber. I'm all limbered up. I can probably fingers are feeling my good. fingers feel good. I can probably <laughs> do it now. And it was so easy. Nice. Like I got in there and I was like, I'm not taking a lot of hits. Things are really like coming together for me. The warrior and spirit he, was flowing. Yeah, the warrior through. spirit was just flowing through me, and then I beat him, and I was like, did you "Do a lot of warrior pose in uh in yoga." We did. There it is. We did the both, secret to video game success. It's everyone. yoga. We yoga did both and warriors vegan snacks. one, two, and I actually didn't know that there was a warrior three. It's weird. Have you ever done warrior three? You like no. balance on one leg, and like you that. have your right or left leg straight back and you lean your upper body forward to basically make like an elongated table pose. Oh, but you're but on, you you're swing resting your arms back. It's like you're kind of one legged Superman. Okay. okay. It. It's weird. I don't it's think I've hard. done that one. I think I've only done like warrior pose one or something. One or two. Maybe. Well, one and two are really like common. And I was like, there's again? a third one. Huh? What are those? I've, I've had, it's been a while since I've done yoga. Warrior one is where you're basically in a long, low lunge, okay. and then you sweep your arms up. Oh above yeah, yeah, your head. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. warrior. I've done one. that one a lot. And then warrior two is where you like yes. tilt okay, on okay, your okay, side. Okay, okay. Haven't you played Wii Fit, the greatest game of all time? No, you've asked me this, and no, I missed Wii Fit, but Gosh. but I have done yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and I and now that you explained to me what the poses are, I would yes, just I assume. have done those two. Okay. They feel great. Oh, they do. They're really good for your legs, nice, arms, nice back stretch too. Your, your pelvic bones. Yeah. Anyways, so if you're struggling with Grim in Hollow Knight, go do some yoga and then come back to it. You'll you'll be doing much better. Nice. Very nice. Well, it was very nice catching up on some of our things. I I, I really like these video these these videos these episodes because they are a lot of fun. Because it's like we we usually come to the table with a prepared topic of. You know, we're going to talk about like a games that fall into this category, this, that, but, but th- this, that, and the other. But it's fun with these to come in and just like not really know. We're just going to talk about we're just talking about whatever comes we want. to mind. And it's great and it's fun. <laughs> and I really enjoy those. So hopefully you all did too. But if you have any thoughts or comments on what we talked about today, be it Civilization Six, Hollow Knight, or even what was the other game you talked about? Because I could Celeste, you Celeste, fool. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but if you have any thoughts on all those games, I don't know why that, that just it just completely was gone. Heavens to bed. Oh my goodness. Uh, but if uh, you have any thoughts on those, send us an email to teamchatpodcast at gmail.com. C- reply below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you all. But before we go, we do have to do our soundtrack spotlight for this week, which we're bringing you the main theme from Civilization 3, composed by Mark Cromer. So... This one is a really fun one, and this is what I was talking about before we started recording, is that it's the intro cinematic for Civilization 3 is really cool, and I always loved watching it, even though I watched it a bajillion times every time I loaded up the game, because it was it started out like the the camera like zooming, flying over this lake, and you could tell it was it, it seemed like in Egypt because of the style of the boats or anything, but it was all like ancient 
ancient everything, and then it comes upon this huge tower being built. But in it and kind of looks like the Tower of Babel, really, or draws inspiration. That's what I always thought from like the Tower of Babel. But basically, as the tower grows and each level of this tower goes, it represents a different time period of the world history. Which is very cool. Which is very cool. And it's like a combination almost of all the different wonders of the world into this one big tower. And so this music plays as you're going through it. It's just this very low. I always loved like the big drum beats at the very beginning, just boom, 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 and everything to, to kick it off. It's a great song. Started many a wonderful trip down history lane <laughs> while playing Civilization 3. So, again, it's the main theme for Civilization 3, composed by Mark Cromare. But that pretty much wraps up this episode of Team Chat Podcast. Until next time, I'm one of your hosts, Jarrett Wilson, joined by Rachel Mogan. Adios. We'll see you all next time. Stick around for the song. <laughs>